What's up guys, this is Aaron Fair. Today I'm going to be bringing you a overclocking guide for AMD based processors. This applies for AMD Phenoms, Athlons and Semperons. Uh, and if you want to overclock it, then uh, this is how you can do so. So, first of all, um, if you're not experienced with PCs and you're not you know, sort of confident enough to do this, then it's probably best avoiding this. Uh, you can do a lot of damage to your PC if you don't do this right. You do this at your own risk, and as long as you're confident with it, then by all means give it a go. But if you're not entirely sure on how everything works, then maybe this video isn't for you. Secondly, um, make sure that your power supply is up for the job. Overclock processors consume a lot more power than uh, stock processors. So if you've got some sort of like, really bad power supply, then don't bother. Uh, go out and buy a decent power supply uh, that will be able to uh, cope with the extra load that these processors are going to demand from your power supply. Finally, don't use a stock cooler. The stock cooler isn't very good, <laughs> even at stock clocks. So uh, <laughs> if you're using a stock cooler, by all means, go out and get an aftermarket cooler. They're relatively cheap. They start from around £15, and they're a lot better um, than anything sort of like AMD package in your box. Don't do this without an aftermarket cooler, because uh, increased frequencies on processors equals increased temperatures as well. And AMD processors don't really like to get very hot, so you really need an aftermarket cooler. As you can see here, I've overclocked my AMD Phenom uh, very slightly from 2.8 to 3.1 gigahertz when uh, cool and quiet doesn't kick in, so let's just uh, make it work a little bit. Uh, okay, apparently it doesn't work like that, so like that. There you go, 3074. What I'm going to show you is how to uh, overclock your processor. It's a very light overclock. It's more to give you an idea of actually how to do it. So uh, let's go to the BIOS. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do it from here. So just shutting down Windows. And uh, going to go into the BIOS and change a couple of options to uh, achieve an overclock. You can overclock higher. You, know, you can push your system a little bit further if you'd like to. Uh, this guy is basically just to show you sort of how to do it. Um, you know, without any major changes to voltage and things like that which I might cover in a, another video so I've got to wait for the BIOS screen to load up there we go and okay I can't seem to get that right so to overclock what we need to do is go into the advanced tab and to jumper free configuration on AMD motherboards Oh, sorry, not on AMD motherboards, on Asus motherboards. Your motherboard manufacturer might word this differently, but a quick look through the options will kind of show you, uh, you know, what you need to see. For CPU overclocking, I've set it to manual. Uh, you can have options manual, auto, standard, and overclock profile. The overclock profiles on Asus boards aren't fantastic and only overclock about 7%, and I wanted a little bit more than that. So it's traditionally at stock auto, change it to manual. CPU frequency, how your processor's uh, sort of like highest frequency is achieved is through this. Default is 200, so 200 times the multiplier of your processor, which in the case of the Phenom 1055T is 14 times, equals 2.8 gigahertz. So adding a couple of uh, you know digits to this will significantly increase your um, overclock because every little sort of one there is times by 14. So I've set a CPU frequency here to 220. Um, it's you know, it'd be quite easy to sort of go even further down to 230, 240, but I'm going to take small steps um, like this. PCIe overclocking I've uh, set to auto. Um, there's no point touching that. Uh, processor frequency multiplier and things like that. The on Black Edition processors this is actually unlocked, but on non Black Edition processors this is locked. So we're going to set this to auto, let the uh, motherboard decide, so we're going to disable that. Everything else I've kept to auto here. Sometimes you need to mess around with the uh, memory speed and things like that. Um, I may cover that in another video uh, again. Uh, but for this, we're going to keep all at uh, stock. So manual 220, auto, auto, etc, etc. CPU configuration. If you want your processor running at full pelt all the time, disable cool and quiet. Cool and quiet down clocks the processor when you're not really using it and saves you, uh, you know, saves your energy and you know, ultimately money. Some people like to turn cool and quiet off when they're going for high overclocks. Other people like to uh, keep it enabled. I like to keep it enabled. There's no reason for me to disable it. So we're going to exit and save changes. 
like so. Uh, save configuration changes next to now. Okay, and we've just got to wait for the PC to boot up again. So I will be back in a moment. Okay guys, so as you can see, we've successfully booted into Windows. If you want to overclock higher, you can increase the uh, CPU frequency that was in the video before from 220 to 230 and so forth. So it's better taking smaller steps and booting into Windows and making sure that your overclock is stable. Uh, finally, if you have a really high overclock, uh, what I'd recommend is actually using a stability testing program like uh, Prime95 or Intel Burn Test to really sort of hammer the processor and make sure that uh, your processor is actually stable at those speeds. Um, if you're, just because your PC may boot into Windows does not mean that the overclock you've just set is stable. Put the processor under load and find out if it really is stable or not. Finally, let's talk about temperatures. AMD processors don't like the heat and uh, they're not like Intel processors. Uh, temperatures of 70 odd degrees will not help these processors and you will end up burning it out. So if you are and you're going for a higher overclock than what I've achieved here, which is around 10%, um, then what I suggest you do is uh, download a program like CPU ID Hardware Monitor and keep an eye on the temperature of your CPU. As you can see here, 30, 30, maximum temperature 35 here. Um, AMD processors, the cooler they are, the, the happier they are. If your AMD processor is reaching above 62 degrees when the processor is under load from a you know, Prime 95 or anything else like that, then that is not good. 62 degrees is too high for an AMD processor. And what that will mean is you'll need to uh, sort of downclock the processor and if you've messed with the voltages, um, take down the voltages as well to actually keep it under that 62 degrees. Aftermarket coolers can really help in this uh, aspect because they you know, they run slower, you know, but they usually have a bigger cooling fan um, on them, so it keeps things uh, cooler than stock coolers. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing this on a stock cooler at all. So now I've sort of briefly gone over temperatures um, and things like that. Anything below, sorry, anything below 62 degrees is fine for an AMD processor. Anything above 62 degrees is not fine for an AMD processor. Um, as you can see here, my overclock's perfectly fine, but it's not a massive overclock. It's more of an instructional video to show you guys how you can actually overclock your processor. Um, what I may do, if enough of you have any interest in it, is uh, I may make another video where we actually start messing around with uh, core voltages and things like that to achieve an even higher overclock. One final thing to say, your processor will need a lot of good cooling if you're actually trying to overclock. So if you don't have great cooling in your case, then it's best not trying this because the amount of heat that it'll um, put out uh, could you know, damage other components inside your PC. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have any questions that you want to ask me regarding overclocking or anything else like that, then feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try and get back to you. I hope this has helped some of you guys in uh, you know, how to overclock your AMD CPU. And uh, until next time, guys, take care.